Now outside Africa, heavy gunfire shattered a 24-hour truce deal in Sudan on Tuesday shortly after it was due to take effect under U.S. pressure on warring military factions to pause fighting that has touched off a humanitarian crisis. Loud shootings reverberated in the background of live feeds by Arab television news channels in the Khartoum capital region minutes after the agreed 6 p.m. onset of the ceasefire deal and warplanes could be seen in the skies above. The conflict between Sudan's military leader and his deputy broke out four days ago, derailing an internationally backed plan for a transition to civil, civilian democratic rule for four years after the fall of Islamic autocrat Omar al-Bashir to a popular uprising and two years after a military coup. Sudan's rival commanders have agreed a 24-hour ceasefire from Tuesday evening, the army has said, following pressure from the United States. For people in the capital and across the country, that could mean relief from scenes like this. A large explosion in Khartoum on Tuesday morning, caught on live television. Residents have been living amid blasts and the sounds of warplanes since violence erupted on Saturday. But speaking on Al Arabiya TV, Army General Shams al Din Kabashi said a ceasefire would start at 6 p.m. We have accepted this for the duration of 24 hours only. Because of the severe humanitarian situation, the residents of Khartoum are experiencing when movement is difficult. Hospitals and other services like electricity and water are scarce. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken had earlier held separate calls with the Army's chief and the head of the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces. If implemented successfully, a ceasefire for 24 hours can create a foundation to build upon for a more sustained halt to fighting and a return to negotiations on a durable end to the hostilities. Blinken also said that a U.S. diplomatic convoy had come under fire on Monday in an apparent attack by fighters associated with the RSF, adding that all those in the convoy were safe. I made very clear that uh, any uh, attacks, uh, threats, dangers posed uh, to our diplomats were totally unacceptable. RSF leader General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, known as Hameti, said the RSF had approved a 24-hour ceasefire to ensure the safe passage of civilians and the evacuation of the wounded. At least 185 people have been killed in the violence, and more than 1,800 are estimated to have been wounded. On Tuesday, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society said it was nearly impossible to provide humanitarian services around the capital. Sudan's health system, it warned, was at risk of collapse. The clashes have also destabilized an internationally backed transition to civilian rule, following decades of autocracy and military control. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.